my name is Sarah Martin and I am the quitting coach and as promised after last week's episode on worthiness I wanted to talk about one of the most powerful practices that really got me believing in the power of energy and mantra and prayer um, it's called the Hoponopono prayer. Again, you don't need to be a religious person uh, to, I say play with this, right? So really I've been thinking about, okay, like, you know, why was I even open to believing all of the things that were introduced to me by different spiritual teachers and Really, it's because I was feeling really cruddy. I was feeling really bad. I had rung all the bells of what was supposed to make me feel good, right? I had uh, gotten the degrees. I had gotten the job. I got married. I had the two kids. I lived in suburbia. All of the things. I was taking decent care of myself, but I was drinking a lot. I was overeating a lot. Um, so by decent care, I mean, I was exercising <laughs> to try to lose weight, right? To look a certain way. So, but again, I ring all those bells that, you know, were supposed to fulfill me and make me happy. And I just, there was an emptiness there. So I think that's really why I was so open that there's something else, right? There's something else out there. So it's really what I do in my coaching is helping people um, explore their own definition of spirituality. And I'm still exploring mine, right? I don't think we just land somewhere and it is a journey too. And you could just believe in, you know, the sunshine. Um, but it is helpful to sense into the fact that we are more than these bodies, right? And all of us have had these synchronicities or something happen where you're like, did that really just happen? <laughs> did that really just happen? Or, you know, you're thinking about somebody and they call or text you, uh, you know, we've all played with that or you have this gut feeling that, you know, something's going to happen and it happens, right? Or you walk in a room and you can tell someone's been fighting uh, just by the energy, right? So, you know, that's really where I started to pick these things up as far as different tools and tips uh, for feeling better, right? It's hard being in this human body. I actually said that to my therapist um, and she's like, I wish more people would say that right and you know that first yoga teacher that really got me on this spiritual path I've shared before you know again I really like fell in love with her because she was willing to say this life thing is messy right it is messy so the more we can really just be at peace with that and not always trying to control and fix it or escape it, right? For those of us who have reached for different habits, you know, I've certainly reached for all of them to try to make myself feel better or just not feel what I'm feeling, right? To just escape and not feel at all. So, you know, when you're drinking, you know, the first one or two, if you're capable of having that, that's lovely. Uh, but for me, it was like, you know, more was always better. Uh, I still have some of those excess issues. So, you know, yeah, one or two drinks can relax you and take the edge off. And, you know, people really do enjoy wine with meals. But for those of us who just don't have that control, um, it started to make me feel better, but then it only ultimately made me feel worse, right? So the things that I was reaching for, the overeating was so in the moment. And then I just felt so much worse about myself. So as I shared last week, that shame spiral can be so hard when we're in some addictive behaviors and, you know, this is why these tips and tools like the thought momentum that I shared, right? So sometimes we can just, you know, think our way out of things, right? So lately, my biggest thing, right, not having the structure job, 
I'm sleeping much later than I'm used to, right? So I've been like sleep shaming myself. <laughs> like, you know, I want to get up at 6.30 and do the thing and have the routine and do, you know, do all of that. And I am just, I'm waking up at that moment, but I just want to like lay in my bed. It's so comfortable. It feels so good to me. And, you know, but I'm also getting angsty as I'm laying there. So I've been like sleep shaming myself. And I was like, you know what? Like, just choose a different thought. Like, it doesn't matter what time I get up. How about what are you making of this day? You know, which again, more pressure, right? But it's a better thought than you big loser, you're sleeping your day away, right? Because I'm getting up at eight o'clock, you know? And again, you know, having given up alcohol and like how many days did I spend hungover and getting nothing done? So our brains are so funny in that way where they will want to shame us, you know, um, before anyone else does, right? Or, you know, I know that that's my safety of, okay, you're, you know, creating a business and you have all these things you need to be doing. So you can't be sleeping till eight o'clock. Like that's just, that's not, that's not a savvy business owner. Um, well, okay. Well, what if I was creating a whole lot of space in my life? right? What if I'm creating this business so that I can have a lot of space and freedom? Then I need to start telling myself different stories, right? So I hope maybe if you watched last week that you've been playing with that a little bit of watching the stories in our head, the comparison, the shame, and all of that. And really what I want to share today, again, was this is one of the most powerful um, it's a, again, it's called a prayer. So it's a forgiveness prayer. I know people get really turned off from God and prayer and any religious hangups, but, um, I'll share the history of this as well. And I'm going to share a practice for self forgiveness. So I will, I'm actually going to do two episodes on this just because it has impacted my life so much and it is so powerful and I should have gotten the book out here um but it's Hugh Len I believe who writes about Ho'oponopono which is a Hawaiian forgiveness prayer and the way that you say it is I'm sorry I love you please forgive me thank you and it doesn't matter what order that you say them in and again I'm gonna give us time to um, go into a practice probably seven or eight minutes at the end of this so I hope you'll stay with me but this practice was discovered you know in Hawaii there was a mental uh, institution prison and the way that they worked this prayer again I don't know who came up with it originally but they would take the files of all of these inmates and they would cleanse themselves of the heinous crimes, right? The the tendency towards violence, the you know, the belief that if we all came from the same source, that any one of us is capable of the things that were committed in that prison. Right? So the so the psychiatrist would sit with the the files and do this, I'm sorry, I love you, please forgive me, thank you. I'm sorry, I love you, please forgive me, thank you, over the files of these people energetically. And the story goes that like the behavior got better um, inmates were released and they eventually closed that prison. So that sounds like so crazy, right? But I will share more next week of my stories about forgiveness with other people. Um, but I wanted to start with self forgiveness just because I feel like it was a good, um, addition to the worthiness piece that I talked about last week and that this is a practice every single day. Every single day I'm forgiving myself for something, right? Something that came out of my mouth, uh, something I didn't get done. Uh, you know, we just really heap a lot of shame on ourselves. A lot of, we put a lot of expectations on ourselves and, you know, inherently, you know, what I may not have gotten to last week was like, what if, what if we are just sacred, beautiful, divine beings, right? That are just worthy and beautiful just because we exist, right? So some spirituality, you know, says that we're here so that God or goddess or energy can have this experience through us, right? So the better we can be to ourselves and the more present that we are, 
the better experience we're having, right? It's when we're striving and achieving or thinking about what happened in the past or what's going to happen in the future. That's where our trouble comes, right? That's where the suffering comes. But if we're like right here, right now with this breath, things are usually pretty good and can actually even be very sweet when we just still our minds and our nervous system and, and ourselves. So um, that's why I play with breath work a lot in these episodes so that you can start using that on the fly, right? When you're, when you're driving and all of a sudden you feel like you're squeezing the, the steering wheel, you know that you can actually just relax your body. So we're gonna play with that for sure, but I have to say, my first year on this journey, I listened to a practice like this probably almost every day for a year. It was my go-to because I am super hard on myself. Like I'm still really hard on myself, I know this. I know this and I can be thankful for that too, right? So, so what's hard or what I found difficult in this journey was okay, I, you know, I wanna stay high vibration and I'm trying not to judge myself, but now I'm judging my judging, right? And it's like, you know what, we're still human beings. Like I was, I was trying to be perfect on the spiritual path too, right? Of like just always being ha ha. Um, and that's not how we're meant to be or we wouldn't have anger and sadness and shame and guilt and comparison. Like that's part of the human journey. So, the forgiveness piece is not in the traditional sense of forgiveness like you did something wrong, right? But it's, for me, the self-forgiveness is like, I'm sorry I'm so harsh with you, right? So for me, it's like your ego to your higher self, right? Your ego just saying like, I'm sorry, I forgot that you are a divine being. I love you just for being you and for having breath come in and out of your lungs. I love you for all of it, for getting up every day, no matter what time, no matter what time, I love you. Please forgive me. Please forgive me for all my judgments, my comparisons, not taking good care of you. And thank you, right? Thank you, thank you like it's already done. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for clearing this out of me so that I can be better to myself and I'm starting with self-forgiveness because as we, most of us know, right? The more secure and loving we are to ourselves, the more secure and loving we are to other people. The more we're able to be forgiving of other people, right? We can see, oh, oh yeah, I've been there too. Oh yeah, you just bit my head off, but I, it was a bad day at work. And that doesn't mean I need to accept your behavior if it's repetitive but I might be able to soften around you a little quicker and not take it so personally and maybe make you laugh about it. You know, I used to lose my mind, lose my mind with my kids because I'm earthy and I would hold things and hold things and hold things and I would, you know, do the laundry and, and then it would come to a time where I felt like I was being disrespected. I would have an outer body experience losing my shit on my kids. It's been a while. Uh, because I've learned to ask for things ahead of time that I need as opposed to like when I start feeling them build like no you're not doing those dishes they got to do these dishes you know whatever that is but when I started on this journey and I started more practices I could be in the middle of something like that and I could catch it sooner and then we'd and I just start laughing, like I'd be like, oh my god like we just start laughing about it so so it can really help soften you up and like I said, a lot of us who are dropping habits or, you know, maybe are in a tough relationship and we're doing and saying things that don't feel good to us, it can be so good to clear it up within ourselves before you're going to somebody else to, you know, say, I'm sorry. Um, and we'll talk about that next week in, you know, general forgiveness, forgiveness with other people in, you know, so many times we want to go ask for forgiveness so that we can make ourselves feel better, right? So that we can be let off the hook. Whereas this is more of an energetic practice. So the way that we do this, um, you know what, again, I just want to share the benefits of it, right? So as I was doing this, as I was doing a practice like the one I'm about to share, 
I slowly but surely started to feel better about myself, right? So when you're feeling better about yourself, you typically reach for more nourishing foods. You want to feel good in your body. So you probably want to move it more, go for a walk or be outside or do some yoga. You know, the drinking, again, just started to drop off because I didn't want to feel icky in my body. I wanted to feel good because I was starting to feel good in my spirit and in my heart. So I think that's really where it starts. And I know that can be so difficult when, you know, we've been sold the bill of goods. Well, I'll feel good when I weigh, you know, whatever that weight that you have in mind is, or I'll feel good when I'm making this certain amount of money. I'll feel good when I'm married. I'll feel good when the kids are out of the house, you know, but really the goal is we want to feel good right here, right now as much as possible to cultivate that. And, and it does take some work and there are a lot of practices that can help us. So this is one of them and I hope you'll, um, you know, share in the comments, um, you know, what you thought of it. And I hope that maybe you can use this as a practice to continue to let yourself off the hook for some of the things that you're really harsh with yourself about. And it doesn't even have to be a thing. It's just, I'm sorry for any time I was less than kind to you, really. Um, and the way that we say it is a repetitive, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And it gets more to a whisper. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. And you're picturing it like riding down your spine as we're saying it. And if you're in a space you can say it out loud, that's great. If not, you can certainly just listen to it and, and just kind of say it in your head. But again, it's kind of starting and then letting it ride down the spine, kind of clearing that nervous system um, as we go. And I'll do a little thing where we you know, bring light to ourselves, um, filling up a version of ourselves um, with light and then letting it merge with you. So again, a really helpful practice uh, let you kind of conjure up, you know, if there is a situation or a certain age, you know, it can be great to go through, you know, all the ages to, you know, kind of clear this up, right? It's like clearing your own karma, right? Of like, okay, when I was 15, oh my gosh, I was so bad to myself, so bad to myself, right? Um, so yeah, so let's just have an experience of it. Uh, Okay, so you want to just sit down wherever you are. You can do this laying down, but usually with meditation, it is good to start seated so you don't fall asleep. Although sometimes they say if you fall asleep, it just means that you needed some rest. So coming in a comfortable seated position and just feeling the back against the chair. Taking three audible sighs out of the mouth, inhaling into the belly, exhaling out. You're bringing those shoulders up to the ears, dramatically dropping them down. Then just letting the belly soften, side body. Just letting yourself arrive here, noticing your regular breath, just following the inhale, letting it fill the belly up, and then exhaling, the belly softens, air comes out the nose. Just again, watching, not doing much to control it, just following it, noticing the pause at the top of the inhale, and noticing the pause at the top of the exhale. Eyes are closed. And relaxing the temples and the facial muscles. Relaxing the jaw, you might wiggle it a little bit. Relaxing the throat, back of the neck. Relaxing the shoulders from the inside out. Noticing anywhere where 
you're holding and bring your breath to that area, anywhere you're tight. And then just soften in the exhale. Noticing the power of intention here. Allowing yourself to soften. And then feeling your sits bones or anywhere where you're connected to the earth, to the ground, to the furniture you're sitting on. And just feeling yourself rooted here, solid, being held. Let me open at the top of the head. If you have a spiritual posse or anyone you call on, ancestors, God, goddess, angels, maybe it's just your highest self, a divine energy. I'm calling in the highest energy to be with us here. Just continuing to soften and allowing a vision of yourself. Maybe your current self, it may be a time where you were particularly harsh with yourself or an incident even that you may still carry around or you yelled at the kids this morning. Whatever's up for you, it can be different. It can just be real general. So whatever image comes, just let that be the image you're going to work with. We don't want to overthink here. I'm just seeing this image of yourself just about five feet away from you. And allowing the light to come into the top of the head and into your heart. Feeling your heart as you exhale, see this tube of light going to this vision of yourself into their heart. Bringing light from above into your head and heart. And then sending it out to this vision of yourself. Watching it go into their heart, down their arms. Each exhale, filling the heart more, going into the chest and the belly. Into the head and the legs. And just filling this version of yourself with light. And then we'll do three rounds of the Ho'oponopono prayer. Starts with, I am sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, 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 sorry. I love you, 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 I love you. Please forgive me, 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 please Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Riding down that spine, taking a nice clearing breath here, inhaling in. <sighs> okay, and just releasing any heaviness and any dense energy. And coming back in, saying, I'm sorry, 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 I'm so harsh with you, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I love you. 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 Please forgive me. 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 
Thank you. 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 Right down to the tailbone. Big inhale in. Exhale, releasing. Starting again with I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Sorry for all the judgment and comparison. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for shaming you. I'm sorry. I love you. 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 Please forgive me. 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 Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for always having my back. Thank you, thank you for showing up here like this today. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Another nice inhale in, exhaling out. Good, holding this version of yourself. Noticing them full of light. If there's anything else you feel like you want to say. The ego, the judgmental, the harsh part of yourself to say to your spirit, to your divine light body. Any commitments you want to make. And opening to hear any messages from this light body, from your higher self, anything they need to say to you. And letting that body of light merge with your physical body, sensing this lightness coming in. Continuing to soften, and putting your left hand on your heart, your right hand over, and just sensing in, maybe you feel a little lighter or brighter. Again, just knowing this is a practice that you can come to at any time. Sometimes I just say, I'm sorry, I love you, please forgive me, thank you. Don't. It doesn't have to be this long chant. It's nice when you can sit with it for you know a good seven to 10 minutes and really, again, just helps you notice what kind of judgments are there, what kind of harshness, and then clean it up, right? I'm sorry, I love you, please forgive me, thank you. And just start clearing that and just notice. You may notice some really cool shifts in your life. Uh, just playing with this. And I'll be back next week uh, sharing some really great stories. Um, it's, it is a little more fun to play with with, with other people because, uh, like I said, I have some amazing stories that happened when I started playing with this. And... Um, when you do it with other people, right, they always say, right, forgiveness is actually for you, not necessarily for the other person. So, so many people feel like if I'm forgiving somebody, I'm letting them off the hook. But again, we also know what it's like to carry that bitterness and that anger and that resentment around. And it's really only hurting ourselves, right? That famous saying of, you know, um, holding on to resentment and anger is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die, right? So it's a, a way to freedom, uh, which I think is really what we're all after here. And that's why I'm the quitting coach, because I think that as we quit certain things like self-shaming and self-loathing and judgment and comparison, there's so much freedom on the other side. So... I am happy to share this and please like and subscribe and share with anyone else you think might need some self-forgiveness this week and I appreciate you listening and I'll be back next week. Much love.